So I witnessed the crisis, the uh, killing field, because the Khmer Rouge, uh, you know, kill and starve and torture people to death, millions of people. Between 1975 and 1979, the communist Khmer Rouge regime killed nearly two million people in the Cambodian countryside. Dith Pran was there. His story of survival under the brutal Khmer Rouge was told in the Academy Award-winning film The Killing Fields. In 1972, Dith Pran began working as an interpreter for New York Times reporter Sidney Shanberg who was covering the spread of the Vietnam War into Cambodia. Together they reported on the war and eventually the collapse of the country. And Pran and I bonded, and I began to realize that he was just as obsessed a reporter, just as determined and driven as I was. From a different, coming from a whole different sort of uh, angle, parallax, His reason was he was convinced that the rest of the world just didn't know what his people were going through, what they were suffering. And that was his mission. In 1975, the American embassy evacuated as the Khmer Rouge closed in on Phnom Penh. Shanberg got Pran's family out shortly before the Khmer Rouge took the city on April 17th. Eventually, Shanberg, like all journalists, was forced to leave Cambodia. Dith Pran could not and he was soon swallowed into the regime's forced labor camps, where he had to hide his education. In order to survive, you have to pretend to be stupid because they don't want you to be smart. They think that the smart people uh, will destroy them. And you uh, try to show that you are not a threat to the regime. For four years, Cambodia was closed to the outside world. During that time, Pran was starving in Khmer Rouge labor camps. He narrowly escaped execution after stealing a bit of food and trying to escape. In that scene, it happened to me because they feel that I'm innocent. I get captured because I steal something, because I was starved to death. As a human being, people cannot allow you to starve and die. So he tolerated us. That's what happened in the middle of the night. They start to release me and put me in freedom. In 1979, Pran escaped and eventually made it to a Thai refugee camp. Sidney Shanberg, who had been trying desperately to find his friend for four years, rushed to Thailand. And around the corner comes Pran, and he's hobbling because his diet, you know, was so bad and he couldn't run. And then I started the run, and then he ran into my arms, and uh, I'm awfully glad that they kept that scene exactly as it was. And he just threw his legs around my waist, and we just hugged for I don't know how long. Well, I was crying, he was crying. And he said... Oh, Sid, you came, you came. And, you know, and I said after a while, can you forgive me for not getting you out? This is nothing to forgive. Pran was soon reunited with his family in the United States. In 1980, he began working as a New York Times photographer, a post he held until 2007 when he entered a New Jersey care facility with cancer. He spoke with the Times in March of 2008 about his life's work, which was telling the story of the Khmer Rouge's bloody regime. I promised myself, if I survive this killing field, I would not stop talking about this kind of crisis. The film, The Killing Fields, opened in 1984, and Pran continued to lecture on the genocide and lobbied to see the leaders of the Khmer Rouge tried for war crimes. 
In addition to the torture and killing of millions, the Khmer Rouge split families and forced children to become soldiers, spies, and executioners. They are good children, they are bad children. The bad children, you cannot blame them because they took them and brainwashed them. In 1997, he published an anthology of memoirs written by Cambodians who were children under the Khmer Rouge. So I figured out to remind the people that not only adults suffer, it the children of Cambodian killings suffer tremendously too. While genocidal wars developed in Rwanda and Bosnia during the 1990s, and more recently in Darfur, Pran never stopped lecturing to raise awareness of the killing fields. Pran cared about journalism, but he cared about this one story, most of all. And it, he, he won't let go now, and he didn't let go then. My people are suffering, and this is their story. And I don't know if the whole thing will be forgotten in 50 years, but it won't, if, they, if it is forgotten by a lot of people, it won't be because Pran didn't spend his life trying to say to them, this is important. My job to want to remember that please everybody must stop the killing field. Not allow this to exist again. One is enough, too many. One time is too many. If they can do that for me, my spirit will be happy.